Support for Cinema Classics comes from Film Columbus, enriching our community to make Columbus a destination for film education, exhibition, and production. Learn more at filmcolumbus.com. Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to shows every Thursday at 8.01 p.m. and full shows online at wcbe.org. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. I'm John DeSando. This is Cinema Classics. It is. And this is a romantic time. It is, I mean, because it's February. <laughs> and we're fresh off our big victory at the Gateway Film Center. Oh, yes. With our, our rom little rom-com <laughs> happy hour right, event. Right. So I thought... I got it. Let me know you here. I got a bone to pick with you. Uh, Actually... I have several bones. Uh, yes, okay. I have a, pick one. I have 206 bones. I have an entire skeleton of bones <laughs> to pick with you. So, you know, we, talk, we, we had this conversation about our favorite rom-coms. Right. right. It was very difficult for me to narrow it down to just the three that I did. But I really thought about time and tone. You know, I picked, I picked Arthur. Oh, right. Okay. Yours were so careful. Annie <laughs> Hall. And then I went, I went and I got The Awful Truth. Heartbreak Grant, Kid. The Heartbreak Kid. Yeah, yeah, right. All of them. Right. All of and our listeners you, know immediately. Yes, and you pick Pretty Woman, which is, that. that's okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Right. Mamma Mia and Crazy Rich yeah, Asians. Yeah, and I did that a as a pop culture choice. That was, those weren't my choices. Okay. Because I have my favorite. Oh, I would love to know what they are. My favorite is, is Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That really surprises me. Why? I... I... Boy, I don't know. Let me let, okay. me, let me unpack that. Yeah, for a minute. all right. Okay. Why does that surprise me that Breakfast at Tiffany's is your favorite one? Because you probably haven't seen it since 1962 <laughs> or whenever no, it came out. 63. Okay. Or whatever. So, oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> no, I uh, also, I don't. I just don't figure you for a George Papard like. That was like, George Papard at his very best. Yeah. That, I, never again was he ever that congenial. He was very <laughs> well. He's borderline uninteresting. <laughs> In that movie, <laughs> I know he is, but he does play a kind of nerdy writer, uh, handsome. Uh, yeah, I get the juxtaposition between her right. and him, a, but a, a good foil for her. She's she's a, a, a parvenu. Uh, parvenu, right. nice. <laughs> she's she's a phony, mm -hmm. and as they say in there, but she's a real phony. Yeah, she's a real phony, <laughs> and it's a lovely movie. Yeah, uh, except for of course Mickey Rooney's. Uh, Racist. Whoa! At least we're talking Japanese about. caricature. Oh, oh my gosh, the worst in film but history. But why is that your favorite? Uh, because it ha it captures to me it captures the romantic essence of New York. It also uh, it also uh, fulfills some of the expectations of romantic comedies. That is, you have two completely different people. Mm -hmm. You have circumstances that are keeping them away from each other. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're going to make it together, but then they're not. And then they finally do. Yeah. And then you have this cat somewhere <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> yeah. It is a that is a beautiful ending. Yeah. In the rain. It, it is so so that's and because of course I was in college at that time. Oh, okay. see, yeah. I got it. And I, I no, that, that that's it. Yeah, it's an it's an association for me. <clears throat> I have the same association with Annie Hall. I uh, had broken up with this girl. I was like seventeen years old. I was heartbroken over it, and I was just. You know, putzing around the house, and I sat down to watch a television, and and I and I stumbled upon Annie Hall, and I really didn't know. I, I hadn't heard about Woody Allen, but I didn't really understand Woody Allen. So, uh, I started watching this movie, and I just was mesmerized by it. One, for, by seeing my own neuroses finally reflected back to me, which as a young kid in Steubenville, oh yeah, yeah, you, neuroses wasn't a a big, you know, oh, yeah, it wasn't yeah, yeah, something yeah. you talked about, but I saw this anxiety and angst, and I was like, wow, like, it just instantly struck me, changed my life, I began devouring all of his movies, <laughs> but the key is that moment, right, that moment when you are at your most sort of romantically vulnerable in life, and then a movie just hits you, and in that regard, romantic comedies as, as sort of dopey as they can be and simplistic sometimes that's the beauty of them is that they're tapped into probably one of the most significant and uh, sensitive and painful times in our lives right and so these movies can just sit with you change you comfort you transform you yeah and um, and that's 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 so appropriate and so much what I feel 
that happens here is that all, most of these rom-coms that we talked about and we are talking about are fantasies. I mean, this isn't the way real life works, except for you and Summer. I don't know anybody who fulfills the romantic comedy requirements who is a real living person. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you for that. I um, think. Anyway, the, if you look, for instance, at Crazy Rich Asians, yeah. I, I hesitate to call it a romantic comedy, but it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's outrageous circumstances. Uh, fabulously wealthy Asians. Uh, there is, of course, the, the difficulty that the two of them are having in, 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 in getting together. He wants to, she doesn't. Uh, there's a different class structure, even though she is a professor at Columbia. Yeah. This guy is from an uber-rich uh, family, and so so it has some of that, but beyond that, it is eye candy mm -hmm. from beginning to end. Yeah. So it lacks some of where I thought to be the nuances of, of uh, say, Breakfast at Tiffany's. So I'm surprised you didn't say The Graduate, because I know uh, how you love The Graduate. Thank you. And, and, and it really is. We have, I think we have traveled here before, but let me remind you, yeah. I have difficulty thinking of it as a comedy. Interesting, and yet it's hilarious. Uh, it, it, it is, but it is such a serious journey yeah. for that young man yeah. that I tend to take it more serious. The difficulty he has with Mrs. Robinson, the, the difficulty he has with Elaine, uh, these are, I think the challenges are more... You know, that's, more... that's a great point. When I was a kid and I was brushing up on the great films, there was this video store, and I was like, I need to see The Graduate, right? I hadn't seen it. I go, and I find it in the comedy section. I, I take it home and I watch it, and I'm like, this is a comedy? I remember thinking that. And then I went back, I wanted to see it again. And I went back to the same video store, I couldn't find it. I asked if it was out. They said no, it was in the drama section. Oh, good one! And then I brought it home and watched it and thought it was hilarious. <laughs> it's a, it, it is a brilliant, a brilliant, uh, sorry, it's a brilliant sort of achievement in tone. Yes, yes, it, yes. It is dramatic. It, you know, I guess you would call it a dramedy today, which I think does it a disservice. Yeah, and I think that's the genius of Mike Nichols, too, to be able to carry that off in both areas. Um, it, it also reminds me that I, I sometimes forget that one of the first romantic comedies that struck me as it being a very serious genre was Much Ado About Nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Beatrice and Benedict and, mm. and, and all the shenanigans that go on in that Shakespearean production. Uh, I, I, I would tend to think of it so lofty, but this is Shakespeare having fun with the rom-com. Yeah, right. So, so in other words, the, the, it's such an interesting genre that we keep going back to because it works. And I also think it's just, like I said before, it's just directly tapped into this one common human experience. We all fall in love. Whether, it doesn't matter what uh, permutation those genders take, it doesn't matter. The, the essence of falling in love is still there, and the joy and excitement of doing it, and then the pain and heartbreak of losing it, or it uh, slipping away briefly right, and coming right. back. Oh. I mean, that is the human thing. In some ways, it's mainstream movies' direct pipeline to the human experience. Beautifully said, as a recently married man. Remarried. <laughs> I would like to get I'm not, I'm not going to go for the numbers that you have <laughs> racked up. <laughs>